Gordon, happy new year. Happy new year to you too. Thank you. Everything well with you? Oh, sure. Yeah, great. It's very windy right now. The last uh, couple of days we've had uh, some rain, but mostly wind. Um, and there was flooding. There was significant flooding. Um, but thankfully, I'm uh, far enough away from that. I mean, very close, like a, a mile away, if that. But uh, but I'm uh, not right on the on the shore. So um, oh, I see. All, all is good. We've had high winds and five below zero this morning. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I, I I know in uh, you know around in English uh, there was supposed to be uh, some winter weather the last few days and winds included in that, but uh, I'm not sure how that affected you. If it, I, I assume it was the same uh, front that came through. Yeah, we uh, we've had some uh, wind. The wind wasn't terrible, but it was uh, uh, enough that I took my flag down. I didn't want it to <laughs> beaten to death. Good, that's good. Well, I'm sure I, I'm sure it takes a lot for you to take your flag down, <laughs> considering your suspenders. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, I have a uh, three section aluminum pole, twenty feet high, and it. Uh, Whoa. It, Whoa. It, it, it just push button and you come down in the sections, but you have to lift the, uh, uh, the, the little part. And then you get down to the, to the, uh, third part, it gets pretty heavy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> oh. There's Vic. Mr. Meganetti is joining. All right. Hello, Vic. It shows Vic is connecting to audio, so hopefully we'll hear him. And, and I don't say that about many people, that hopefully we'll hear them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think, I think we got you connected, Vic. Say something, say something, Vic. I'm not sure. Hello, everybody. Hello, Robert Mason. Robert Mason. Yeah. There's Michael Flanagan. Hello there. Michael, Michael Pale. <laughs> Michael Pale used to say. <laughs> Victor yeah. Meganetti. Yeah, we got Victor Meganetti on here. Well, it's I, I think we have a quorum. You got any snow out in Leesburg, Mike? Huh? Have you gotten any snow out in Leesburg? No. No. How about in Ruston? Well, we're farther east. <laughs> yeah, Lees Leesburg. It's here later if there is any. Sure. Can everybody hear me? This is Vic. I yes. Heard you. Yeah. Loud and clear. Good, good. What's the temperature out your way, guys? <laughs> Lebanon, five degrees, five below zero this morning. Oh, boy. Cool. So, you know, down the sunny southern part of the state, it was, I think it's 82 here today. <laughs> I'm not buying it. No, that's that's a little that's a stretch of the imagination. <laughs> it's it's in the 40s here in uh, in Cape Cod. Not bad. Uh, we're 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 sending something your way though. Oh well, I'll I'll look out for it. <laughs> How have you been, Jeremy? Great, oh, and wow. happy New Year to everybody. Yeah, really. Hey, oh, John, wow. we've, got, we've got my uncle John joining and and yeah. Tim also. Oh, and Leslie. Yeah. Hey, happy new year. Happy new year. 
I think I think the Flanagan brothers are are looking pretty good this new year. I got to say, <laughs> hope to. <laughs> we just got off our Zoom with the uh, with Bloomington and Virginia. Yeah, I need to take my break, so I'm going to leave you to talk with Leslie. Oh, be right back. All Hi, right. Tim. Hey, uh, Granddad, were were you just on that Zoom recently? Yeah. Yeah, Uncle no, Mike. Not, yes. Yeah, you remember? Hey, and Granddad, you your brother Mark visited you not too long ago, right? Over Christmas, Mark and Karen and Jessica, they were there. Do you remember that visit, Granddad? What's that? Your brother Mark. And Karen and Jessica, they visited you a couple weeks ago. I got no memory. I got yeah. A, you don't you don't remember seeing them a couple? Your brother Mark? I think I saw him. Yeah. Yeah. He was Mandy, there around yeah. Christmas time. Mandy said yes. Yeah. Well, I know, but I'm asking you. <laughs> <laughs> I I already know the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> So we've been talking a lot about temperatures and we've been freezing here. Oh, it got, it's let, last let us hear nights, it, Leslie. Last two nights got down to 59. Oh, <laughs> that is, I just took off my jacket. My dad just took off his scarf. Yeah, we're, we're not used to that here. <laughs> so yeah, Mark said it was two degrees in Bloomington mm. right now. Yeah, it's some of the coldest temperatures we've had here in, in uh, the New Albany, Jeffersonville area for several years. I think four or five years since we've had it this cold. Wow. How cold is it there in that area now? I think it's around 19. Oh, 19. Okay, so it's colder up in Bloomington. Oh, yeah, it's a little farther north. Lebanon, Indiana was five below this morning. How about that? Wow. Nippy. And we're yeah. we're talking with the wind chill. Right? No, actual temperature. A five absolute below. temperature. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. I remember when, when I lived in South Bend, uh, I remember there was a, a time when we had, what they call it? The polar vortex. And we went to negative 17 in absolute temperature. Wow. Okay. My dad is back. We were just talking about temperatures, how you just took off your scarf. Oh. <laughs> that gonna... That's like, it's good that you have that beard, Uncle John. It, it keeps you warm. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That helps. <laughs> okay. good, to, good to see you guys. You too, Leslie. Okay, okay take care. Yeah. Got it. So, so it, it's a new year. Uh, my my granddad Mike has a, a second great grandchild. My oh. my cousin Brandon uh, had his first child just a couple days before Christmas. So that, oh, wow. that, was the, that was the big news, I think, in our branch of the family. Okay. We have That's another cool. great grandson due in March. 25 to 30 counts came out to help moving other way It'll make six, three boys and three girls. <laughs> like, like the Brady Bunch. <laughs> Okay, John, you're on you're on Zoom now, aren't you, John? I'm on what? You're on Zoom now, right? I am. <laughs> okay. Did I, do I remember right that when we were in Paducah, you said that you were already in the process of scheduling a room <laughs> in Indiana for the next eclipse? Oh yes. And you're coming in for that? That's right. How about that? 
Bloomington is near dead center. I've got a map and I'm going to, I'm going to see if you can see it. It shows where Southern Indiana is going to be. Yeah, I don't know whether you're going to be able to see this or not. Yeah. You yeah. You, you see the band is, is, is Bloomington. Well, it must be right where all of those roads converge. Right in the center, this is from outdoor Indiana, mm -hmm. and right in the center is where it's supposed to be the longest totality, something close to five minutes. Wow. The farther, the farther away to the edges that you get, like for instance, English Indiana, Crawford County is right on the lower edge, and it'll only get about one minute or maybe a little less than one minute. Wow. Yeah, but there's one thing interesting about that location, too. That is that you have this diamond ring, diamond ring effect just as the sun goes behind the moon. Yeah. And it gets real bright. Well, at that location, it stays diamond ring effect for a long time. It, it, oh. At, it, at, yeah. at which location? Right on the edge. Ah, like, like English, Crawford County. Well, I, I haven't got the map in front of me, but yeah, yeah, not so, not exactly in the center, but on the peripheral, on on the yeah. very edge. Yeah, you don't you don't ah. see very much total eclipse because it doesn't go completely behind. But it's during those few seconds that it's exactly right on the edge that you have the diamond ring oh. effect, and you can, yeah, it's very nice. I'd like to see that because I've seen a couple of good total eclipses. So Lebanon, wait, is, so, Lebanon so, is expecting a lot of people to be here because it's uh it has totality. So so un Uncle John, are you, are you gonna ditch us in Bloomington to head to Crawford County so you can see that diamond effect? <laughs> no, I, I don't think <laughs> I'll do that this time. But you're but but you're coming? Oh yeah. Oh wonderful. Me me too. I'll see you there. Good. And no, my, we'll, my... we'll we'll sit inside and watch the rain. <laughs> oh boy! Well, well, I was going to say Paducah. I know we weren't dead center, but it sounds like I mean I think we had in Paducah two minutes and some change of total, uh, you know, of totality. So it sounds like if we're in Bloomington, we're going to have twice that length of totality. That's, about, that's right. And guess what? Paducah is getting it again. That's not oh. fair. <laughs> are they are are they in the center? Not that close. Uh, not quite the center, but they're they're going to have probably more minutes than they did six or seven years ago. Okay. So so Vic, you're you're coming to Bloomington? No. The traffic jam is going to be horrendous, from what I understand. My daughter and I are going to drive west to English, Indiana, and then drive north, and we're going to shoot for Pioneer Mothers Park. John, you <laughs> know where that is? Paoli. And just south of Paoli. Yeah. And the interesting thing about that park is it's supposed to be the only 40-acre chunk of land that's never been cut over. It's completely virgin. So my daughter's interested in taking a hike through those woods. Oh. I was first in the nation. That's that's interesting. But when that park was first opened, they called it Breeden Park, right? And then they decided that that was too descriptive a title, and so they changed it to Pioneer Mother. <laughs> yeah. Now, that, this is different from Pioneer Village. Uh, yeah, it is. Okay. Pioneer Village is in Spring Mill, I think. And that isn't that where the Sloan cabin is? Uh, Sloan cabin sure. up north of around. Uh, uh, oh, I mean, south south of Indianapolis, but north of Paoli. And right now there are no Crash. Maybe, maybe Mitchell. I don't remember where it is up there someplace. It, it's not Pioneer Village? Mass area 
Jeremy, this is on Indiana 37. It's in a bend, a big bend in the road. And definitely when you're talking forestation, that has a very huge, a lot of huge trees in there that has not been, uh, nothing has been taken out for a number of years. Pioneer Village is a different location further north. Yeah. Okay. Vic, yeah. I just uh, I just pulled it up on my phone. It says it's 88 acres uh, south of Paoli. And the uh, uh, last old growth forest of its size in Indiana. Hmm. Okay, yeah. good. Nice. I always enjoyed walking through there and because it was flat. <laughs> One of the Den Denton boys lived near it uh, when I was there in Orange County. So now, Jeremy, uh, is there going to be, uh, isn't there supposed to be a pass over where you live or not on the Cape? A what? Oh, of, of the eclipse? Yes. No, no, it's not. It's not coming this way. I'm, I'm going to be in Bloomington. Well, I know, but I got a, I received uh, information that it was going right over the tip of the cape there. And so uh, that's why I was just curious if it uh, I don't think it no. was correct or not. No. Okay, so for, that's certainly not within the, the band of totality. I mean, there may be some, I mean, I'm sure there will be some effect visible, but no. no I, I don't think that even that. Really? The cape is quite a way off from the math from the path of the eclipse. Mm. People around here have to go clear up almost to Canada to mm. see it up there, so in totality anyway. Hey, Granddad. Granddad. What? Do, do you remember when we went to the eclipse in Paducah, Kentucky? Do I remember what? The eclipse, the total solar eclipse. Yeah, I remember when we went there. Yes. Well, there's going to be another one in a couple of months. Well, I don't plan on going. <laughs> Where? Wh what plans do you have to go anywhere? I watch it on TV. <laughs> I always jokingly said that when we were on vacation, I told the boys, get back into the car. You can see the pictures when we get home. <laughs> That's good. Now, on another note, um, you knew that Ernie Scowden had passed away. John, have you heard that Ernie Scowden passed away? No, I had not heard that. Yeah, he passed away. A few days ago, and his daughter called me from uh, Texas, and she gave me the information on his uh, his celebration of life. It's going to, and it's, I'm, and Gordon, Gordon, I've given you the basic information, but it's going to be on February the seventeenth, between one and four in Huntingburg, Indiana at 1408 North Main Street, Huntingburg, Indiana, 1408. And Gordon, I'm going to drive down, and I think Joe Tyler is going to ride with me. And if you want to come down this way and ride with us down there, you're more than welcome. I thought I might uh, go, but uh, it, it's 152 miles from here. So I think I'll go down the day before and maybe visit my niece down around Tell City, oh, and then yeah. and see you that day. Uh, that I'll be there at one o'clock, apparently. Okay, and, and uh, you want me to bring bring your sport coat down? That you, uh, yeah, you yeah. Bring, bring bring my traveling jacket if you would. <laughs> okay, all right. I'll definitely try to do that. It has a lot of road miles now. I bet it does. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds like there's a story there. As we head through the rest of the week, it's going to be cold. High in the 20s, teens. Even though it's expected. Gordon came down 
to my house in New, in New Albany uh, back in, uh, I think it was October. October was it October? Okay, when we had the English alumni reunion, and we rode down to English, and Ernie Scowden was supposed to come that day, but he called me later and said he wasn't feeling too well, and he decided not to come. But anyway, he he left his jacket here at my house. He spent the night with me, and so so anyway, his jacket is still hanging in my closet. It's a little bit big for me, or I'd be wearing it. <laughs> Oh, uh, you'll grow into it if you eat right. <laughs> <I get it>. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I've, lost, I, I've lost weight till it's big on me now, Vic. Oh, okay. Okay. Are you losing weight because you want to or not? Uh, yes, when I got on the scales and a little uh, ticket came out and said, one at a time, please, I thought it was time to <laughs> lose a little weight. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. I have enjoyed your pictures of your uh, that you took, that you had sent in December with your, um, with the, uh, when you were doing the Christmas programs. Oh, you, you were Santa. Well, we uh, uh, we had an arrangement. Uh, uh, the Shriners uh, are in a, a one part of the building, and next door, uh, we have leased the building to Live Nation, where they have used the theater. And uh, so Live Nation approached our people and said, you know, we'd like to have uh, uh, pictures with Santa, and we'll we'll set up the uh, professional photographers and all that kind of thing if you can supply the Santa Clauses. So three of us said we would do that, and uh, a fourth one said he would be backup, and he had to uh, appear at one of those performances because uh, uh, one guy had uh, an event that he was had to go to, and he asked if the other two could do it, but we were both going to the same dinner that night. And uh, so this past grand master wore my Santa suit to that event. And uh, interesting thing, at least to me, was that uh, uh, people were paying $15 to have a picture with Santa. And that was okay. That was fine. Raised money that uh, we split with our hospitals. And uh, uh, I'll be taking our share of the of the money up to Chicago Hospital on the 23rd to pre present that check. But uh, uh, on one event, well, and we always had a second man there who was walking around talking about Shriners Hospitals if people wanted to know about it. And uh, so this one night, Dave and I got there and uh, there was no photographer. And uh, then we found out the Live Nation had reached out to uh, some groups in the community and had donated tickets to underprivileged children. And that was perfect for me because Dave would go out and tell people, come on in and, and take pictures with your phone. And if you want the family in it, I'll take the pictures. So we, we had at least, I think, eight Down syndrome uh, children. Uh, from from very young to one who stroked his beard while the picture was taken. And uh, so, you know, the Down syndrome people are always so happy. And, and uh, it, it was a great evening. And this one one little uh, Down boy came to, right in front of me and he said, you the best, you the best, you the best, you the best. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a great evening. Much better than than having people pay fifteen bucks for the pictures. I bet. Well, another thing too is what uh, hearing you say it and tell it versus writing about it gives a lot more perspective to what was actually going on. So, uh, thank you for sharing that. Uh, Can well, I ask one more question? Yeah. Ernie Scouten, didn't his daughter marry a Lambden in Paoli, or am I wrong? Do I have the wrong person? His sister, Sandra, married some guy from Paoli, and I think it was Lambden. Oh, who? Ernie, oh, Ernie's sister. Yes. Oh, okay, now. Oh, my goodness. 
Okay. Because he was older than his sister then, wasn't he? I never knew him. I knew his sister. Yeah, Ernie Mr. was uh, almost 89. He was 88 when he passed away. Almost 89. Yes, okay. Like I say, I have to put my thinky cap on here sometimes to figure out who's <laughs> what age everybody is and stuff like that. So it's hard for me to do that. When people ask my name, I usually hold my jacket out, look inside the label, and I say, Factory Naval Clothing, sir. <laughs> <laughs> One thing about Ernie Scouten, we always thought he was probably the richest kid in English because he got a yellow Triumph motorcycle for his 15th birthday. For his 16th birthday, he got a brand new Corvette. He didn't like that so well. So a couple of years later, he got a new Thunderbird. He had a 57 Chevy. We thought he was rich. He told me later that was all a, all a facade. He was All a stamp. Huh? Well, he, uh, later, he later got a D-Jag, too, when he was in the Air Force, right? I think that's right. Yeah. 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 Well, you're talking about deaths. I was, uh, Phyllis Goldman, I think, died in December. Phyllis Goldman. She's a Crawford County girl of our age, and she was married to my first cousin, Alden Goldman. Plug? Plug Goldman. Okay, what was her maiden name? Pate. Phyllis Pate. Pate. Yeah, and her brother ran a restaurant there in Leavenworth. Yeah. And she built, she had the the restaurant, the, what the Breedens owned oh. up on top of the hill, too. She started that. The, the, the Overlook? The Overlook. Oh, really? No yeah. kidding. My dad, dad did, my father worked two years as a carpenter. After he got out of the Navy in World War II, and he uh, did some carpenter work. He and the person he was working with, he did some work there to, before she opened it up. When, when was that? When, when was the Overlook founded? Well, Dad worked for carpenter two years after, so it was 46 to 47. Hey, Granddad. What? Hey, do you remember the Overlook restaurant in Leavenworth? The what? The Overlook oh, restaurant. Yeah, sure, I remember. The the founder of it recently passed away, and she oh, was yeah. she was a Goldman by marriage. So, on Nana's side of the family, there's a connection there. You know, about a year ago, that restaurant was up for sale. Yeah. And I asked, I asked what the cost was, and the the manager said they're asking one million dollars for it. Well, that might not have been an exorbitant price. Several acres go with it, straight downhill acreage. Mm -hmm. But, but I couldn't come up with enough money. <laughs> well, not, now it's uh, uh, Brandon Howell and his mother Kathy have owned it for. About that time, Vic. Okay. That's probably the best view on the Ohio River, no question about it. Horseshoe Bend. Yeah. Yeah, Vic, we had our 50th uh, class reunion there, didn't we? We uh, sure did. Yeah. And then we went back. You and Della and I went back uh, representing the rest of the class. We did. That's right. Well, uh, like Robert Mason said, speaking of deaths, we had uh, last month in December, my granddad and Uncle John's second cousin, Paula, Paula Niemeyer Ferguson, passed away. Do, do any of you guys know her? Oh, yeah, I knew her. I knew her. I know Bob Roberts did, but he's not on today. But that was 
largely proximity there in English. Yeah. Has Where anybody heard it? from Bob Roberts? No, you know, he, he was having trouble connecting to the Zoom and I, I, I told him that he needed to upgrade his version of Zoom and that someone at the library could help him do that. Um, but I don't I don't know that that's happened. But his his version of Zoom was so far uh, it was old enough. He, he hadn't upgraded it kind of contemporaneously. So it got to a point where it wasn't supported. So he has to upgrade his Zoom. But he he and I had been in email contact um, a few weeks ago. Yeah. All right. I had to just go on ahead and get a new version of it, period. Because yeah. it didn't, well, like I say, mine was so old, but anyhow. Mm -hmm. Does anybody hear from Ron Kissel at all? I occasionally do uh, Facebook, and then his uh, daughter, Valerie, uh, I communicate with her on Facebook. Had, okay, go ahead. Hadn't he joined a few months ago? I, I wasn't on, but di didn't he join the Zoom one time recently? Am I wrong about that? Yeah, he was That's on it. a couple times. Well, but I, 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 mean, I mean, within the last six months. No, no. Uh. What oh. happened was afterwards he fell and he had such a hard time recovering. And right. that's why I was just, uh, but I know he did recover. Um, he has a niece, Glenda Jackson. Uh, Glenda Smithson was her name. She, her sister is Marlene Tony um, Poindexter. And they work, you know, keeping up with him and stuff. So, but I, they haven't really corresponded often. I mean, they did at Christmas, but, you know. I'll reach out to John and, and Valerie. I'm to, to Ron and Valerie and just see uh, if he is interested and able to get on. He might have just forgotten about it. No, that, that would be great. I, I remember he had a little help getting on before, so I'm not sure who that was or where he was living. So, yeah, that would be great. I believe they're in North Carolina. I think Georgia. Yeah, I think Georgia. Oh, further south of Georgia. Yeah. Down in Georgia then. Atlanta, Georgia, did you say? Yeah. Oh, ooh. poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Atlanta. I tell you, that has changed in the past 50 years. I have a first cousin that's living in Canton, Georgia now, and that's, uh, I don't know, about, I think it's about 40 miles north east of Atlanta, and the town is really a booming. A lot of those places in North Carolina and Georgia, and even, in, even South Carolina is starting, I mean, and especially if you go over towards the coast, it's bizarre what they're doing. I mean, it's flatter than a pancake, but in South Carolina, but, you know, I mean, you get away from mountains and everything towards the ocean. Uh, I can't tell you how many people have been going in down there and um, business and you name it. Don't worry. I'm glad they're doing it. I don't want them here. Sorry. <laughs> I like our rural nature here. I was talking with uh, the director of historic landmarks, the Southeast District, the, the offices in New Albany, and I was asking specifically about the English Indiana Mill. Have any of you heard much about that? About the mill? I, I just saw something posted on social media about it. It's going to yeah, be restored it. or some sort. Is is this Greg Secula? Greg Sekula, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I saw something about the English mill. It's going to be restored in some fashion. That's my understanding. I don't know uh, exactly what it's going to be used for, but it 
and I asked him how old it was, and he said, we're trying to find out. He said it was there in the 1880s, but he doesn't know exactly when it was built. Well, who, who led this charge? Because I hadn't heard anything about it. I do not know whether someone in English uh, was it responsible for leading the charge or not, or whether Greg Sekula himself heard about it, knew about it, and began to investigate it. Huh. And What's it, that lady's name that came to English and, and started getting a whole bunch of stuff done? I don't recognize the name if you said it, but I can't. I can't recall it. Wasn't it uh, Maxine's daughter-in-law? I think you're right. Yeah. Maxine Staniford. Yes. Huh. I don't. I don't remember hearing about. I'd have. I'd have to look it up. I know I've got some emails about it. Her son, uh, I think his name Richard, and his wife, they moved into Maxine's house. Mm. Right. And his and the wife, I think the wife started is also tr trying to get a trail uh, made through English, and she was she was trying to get that old mill renovated. I, I, that's my understanding. So, well, so that's pretty recently. That that's since Maxine passed. Yes. Oh. No. She, she was, was Maxine Redding, about, wasn't she? She was talking about an English civic club. Hmm. So it sounded like a real go-getter. And there, the, the trail that you just mentioned, they're supposed to create a trail from the golf course through Old English all the way out to Sycamore Springs and back. Oh, is, this what driving, or, is this a driving trail or a walking trail? Walking trail, walking trail. Oh, my. There are some uh, definitely uh, steep hills in there. Yep, there are. Robinsons have that, Robertsons have that uh, camp up there, too. Yes, sir. Sy Sycamore Springs. We've got, yeah. we got two and a half minutes left. Ouch. <laughs> well, I think I'll sign off and miss the, the crowd. I'm, I'm, and I will too. It's dinner and time. Thank you for thank you for everything you've done. We'll <laughs> okay, uh, see you guys. Take care. Take bye -bye. care. Well, see, uh, see you guys. Yeah, I guess we'll have another Zoom. Uh, hey, two bye bye. Two zooms before the solar eclipse. That's right. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Bye, everyone. Okay. Bye, bye. Good, bye, good everyone. You. Bye, Granddad. We're still gone. Bye, Granddad.